We are now in one of the back rooms at Antoine's. And it's kind of dark and kind of creepy. And Mary has brought us some adult beverages and it's gonna tell us a little bit more about what we have here as well as where we are. <laughs> well, you are in what is now known as the mystery room. The mystery room, which has several different entrances, was originally the old speakeasy part of Antoine's. Prohibition never sat well in this town. Yes. So you can imagine that even the fanciest of restaurants, and this is the oldest five-star family-run restaurant in the country, Antoine, since 1840, with the same menu and some of the cocktails, or cocktails, if I want to say it correctly. So I made you some old ones. And just in case you do not know, I am very much a holistic paranormal investigator as well as voodoo priestess, and I very much believe in invoking and evoking, not provoking spirits, and spirits love spirits, so we're gonna share with the invisibles that are all around. I have ceremonial rum. You, sir, have the classic Sazerac cocktail. And you have a sidecar New Orleans style with a bit of a kick and spicy New Orleans rum put inside, so we kinda sometimes call it a streetcar. So you've got uh, spicy rum in that, and uh, Peshaw bitters. This was the original cocktail, ever, ever admitted. The very first cocktail was this. It was served in an egg cup and made by a local pharmacist. And so it was cook, cook, like egg, tail. But the Americans couldn't say that like the French could, so they said cocktail, bastardized it. Oops, sorry, can't say that word. Anyway. Can't on this show. So I shall say that we must toast to the ghosts. I will call the spirits. Mirror's always a good place, and a great place for Bloody Mary with a mirror, right? So here. Open the gates, open the way. Call on all the spirits that are around. Those whose energy survive in the brick and mortar that do surround. We ask that we may see you, feel you, hear you, and photograph you with great respect. A toast to the ghosts, gentlemen. You, I will do mine my way, you do yours your way. And y'all just pour a little. The hearth is the home. How do you like the drinks first? Excellent. Amazing. It's a little kick, yeah. not like he kill you over spicy, but the Sazerac and the, co and the bitters that's here, the Peshaw bitters is different. It's more of like that kind of aromatic spice like um, ginger would be as opposed to Tabasco, which is also in there. So right. we'll give a bit of the rum to the spirit. So Uncle Roy, Uncle Roy, if you hear me, come on out and any of the other ancestors of the Antoine family. Same family has been running it since 1840. And the most common ghosts in the world are your own ancestors. And when you haven't changed things much, you know, it's easier for them to get around. And they've changed a few things. There were some secret doorways here and other ways to get into the room that was the speakeasy. But um, the ghosts are on the old floor plan. They don't care if you walled it over. They still use it as a door. So there have been many occasions I knocked just like I did. And that was a real person, not a ghost, by the way. Um, I knocked just like I did, and things walked through and disappeared and scared the people that were on the other side because it used to be a private break room. But I'll tell you some more historic tales. Would you like me to take you through and about, or you want me to tell you a little bit more about the cocktails? Well, you, you spit your cocktail. Oh, I didn't spit it. I sprayed it. That is a typical voodoo way of giving an offering for you're mixing it with your breath and with your soul. And it, the breath is the soul according to many, so when you're giving of the essence. When you do an offering in that way, you spray. So you're not drinking it, you're infusing it into the atmosphere. You guys don't have to do that. Plus, I don't know how much Antoine's like. Just pour a little bit. The hearth. appreciate it if we sprayed? No. The spirits might, but the place won't. <laughs> I, I'm a professional sprayer, spewer. Just a little. A bit. They love the spirits. Now, as I mentioned, this was the old speakeasy. <laughs> and uh, Prohibition didn't sit well most of the country, but it certainly didn't sit well here. New Orleans has always been a drinking town, and most of the things in this city have been planned with drink in hand. So even the fanciest of restaurants had its own speakeasy. You would enter from the main dining room through a little hallway with a coffee cup, come in here, get it filled, and go back and sit and dine like no one would know. There was another secret entrance on the outside down a long red hall that the password would get you in. Now it was difficult, it was difficult to bust people at first on Prohibition. You know, people weren't really 
bobbing with it till a hot shot fed man came around to rate cities on how bad they were, on how quick they were to get drinks. New Orleans came in number one. Yeah, Chicago being like number three at about two days, and New York being like number two at like 28 hours, and New Orleans being about four minutes. As soon as they got in the cab, the guy whipped out something and sold it to him right there. So <laughs> it is not unlikely that, you know, spirits do love spirits and that it's always been a part of this town. Now, this family has a very strange way of dealing with things. On several areas of this restaurant, they lock it up when it's no longer kosher, let's say, to do certain things. So on the repeal of Prohibition, Uncle Roy, who was the family member who had this particular area, locked this door permanently and left this whole area shut for a good 40, 50 years. Then the family redid it and made it one of their private dining rooms called the Mystery Room. One of the mysteries is because of the ghost. Another mystery is because of a painting that seemed to come on the wall for no reason and nobody knows how. All is vanity with the skull. However, late one rainy night, we have everyone here leaving for the night except for a new waiter, the apprentice waiter with his waiter. And he was closing up some duties and things and he was looking for the waiter to get out. He was walking down that area, the area that used to be the jail, and he sees a white shirt, a white glowing shirt, an outline of a man walk into this door and just disappear. He ran up and called the waiter's name, thinking it was him. The door was locked from the inside, and at that moment, the waiter comes from the other part of the restaurant. He turns around and sees him and realizes that he had seen a ghost. When they realized later the date that that was, it was on the anniversary of the repeal of Prohibition, and he locked himself in yet again. And lots of things move around here, jump through the walls. You'll see spirits of the ancestors who lived here, worked here. And this is the kind of place that has three, fourth generations of waiters, of bartenders, of servers. The families and their families' families continue to work here as well as continue to own here. That kind of ancestral energy is, is very, very positive and very unusual to have so long of it. So they're all over this place. But the mystery room's known to be the most haunted. I'll show you the way we used to go in in days of old. Let's go check it out.